and Deauville. De... Brigitte. It's okay. <laughs> Easy. But where is that name from? That's a Lithuanian one. Oh. Well, I would have said it very differently, so I'm glad that you said it properly. <laughs> um, welcome to, uh, actually, it's breakfast with you two for people on the East Coast. Um, hey, guys. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. morning. Good afternoon. How's life been for you two? Uh, well, <laughs> I have to say good you know it's I mean it's it's a sort of uh, we, we are we are in this in this, in this position that we are luckily we're healthy and uh, uh, also luckily we went before this whole thing happened we went to the Maya clinic so we got really healthy and uh, got all these vitamin things and and all our blood checked up and everything like that. So we were in a good condition in a thing, in, 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 in terms of uh, uh, Im health. Im 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 health, immune system and everything like that. And, and uh, Well, we got fat again, so. What, after the clinic? How, how many times, do you go to the clinic every single year? Uh, mo mostly once a year, yeah, yeah. I love it there, it's, it's, it's really great. Did you do a photo story this time? No, I've done yes, that. Oh, we've we? done that. Oh yeah, of course thing. I did. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's in a, it's, it's coming it's in a book, but that got delayed because of also because of that lockdown now. But I think the funny thing was that we learned about the virus when we were there, and yeah, again, I guess it was really, I don't know, very early. He said, "Oh, we need to take pictures with a mask before anybody before anybody was even talking about it." It was like. Just the breakout in 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 China. Yeah, and, and I thought, really, wow, that's kind of out there. And, and of course, the clinic they had some masks. We had no Otherwise, idea. You know, it's going to become normality. Have much of a mask. Yeah. Anyway, and we did the, these, these these nude pictures with a mask in in these Austrian forests. So you had no idea at that point that 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 this was going to explode. No. 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 And I thought it was really, I thought, oh, wow, Jürgen, really great idea, you know, this mask, you know, and, and whatnot. We had no clue that it's going to turn, that this mask will be something that we will be wearing every day, all of us, and, and, and that everything will go this direction, you know. But you, you seem to have been working a lot through this whole situation. You seem to have... I mean, being, being you're, you're as prodigious as you always are. So how have you managed to do that when everything's been about social distancing and, and you know, you can't, obviously you can't have teams of people and um, everything is much more. So happy, so happy that nobody's in the studio. <laughs> it's like freedom. It's like, uh, uh, it's like, uh, I feel like a, uh, uh, so free and like a child playing in my in my studio doing all these things and it has been such a pleasure not being uh, I, I just realized how much commercial work one does and how much energy and and time and effort and and and, 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 and it takes to do all these commercial things where you have to make money and uh, and and uh, thankfully we have right now the freedom to to have the time to, to to do whatever we want to do and and, and I had, I had and, and time's running out for me i have so many ideas so many books i want to do and I, and I haven't even got time to to because there's always something else going on and and uh, i'm doing a lot of still lives when and and and, and then i did these portraits for system magazine as you were a part of it but uh, even by, before by, that by we started doing things really yeah and, when you uh, say time running out what do you mean <laughs> yeah. uh, it feels like the world wants to move on again doing you, you, you know cl clients asking normal. how you know how is it possible can we shoot something do, 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 and things like that and i would i would uh, I, I have so many things I, I i i would be so happy to be on my own in the studio with deville and and working on on these book projects i have in my mind and I think uh, soon my head will be occupied with, with uh, possibly shooting campaigns again. 
which I, is also good, you know, I think which this, is also very exciting. This downtime or lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. lockdown time, yeah. Um, I, you know, I was very lucky to observe Jürgen turning, not so much turning because he is an artist, but he really went crazy being an artist and he was just very free without thinking about what's the deadline or what's, you know, what's next project or where we have to travel, you know, and things like that. And he really, really was just taking pictures and pictures and pictures and somehow this lockdown or, you know, or limitations made him become even more creative. And it was quite interesting to see because he was just bursting with ideas. It was like really incredible. And I saw him just forgetting everything else as just taking really great pictures, really. And it was interesting to see that, you know. So I was, I, I was intrigued. You were talking about a sort of revisiting your GOSIES project. Um, which was a book that came out in the in 1999, yeah. and that was that book has become something of a classic in in fashion photography or in photography because of the way you approached that subject of you know young models on go sees. Um, how did you revise that with this uh, with the new approach? Well, it was quite, you know, I, I kind of got uh, well known as a fashion photographer back then, uh, 30 years ago, <laughs> or 25 years ago, or whatever. He is so old. Oh. And, <laughs> no, he started young. What was I thinking? What was he, he started young, remember? And... Uh, and it was it was exciting, you know, like uh, certain magazines asking me, do you want to photograph Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista or Stephanie Seymour or, or whoever it was, one of those supermodels, which were these sort of unreachable supermodels at the time, you know, and I was extremely young and, uh, and, and some people flew me over Concord and, and it was super exciting and or first class and then you do these pictures. Okay, and then okay. It became, well, well, that's what it was, and uh, uh, and then I thought, what, what, what am I doing? You know, this is it's not getting exactly uh, the work is not getting exactly where I want to go, where, where I want the work to go, and and I kind of got bored with it, and I thought I don't want to go into this commercial route, and then I just sort of thought I I just be in my studio, and uh, let the world come to me, and. There's this, you know, and, and then I, I did a fashion story for, you know, very little, you know, like uh, one story for ID one, one year and then and half a year later, something for the face or whatever it was, you know, it was very, very slow. But then model agencies called me up. Oh, there's Eva had to go, but she has got green hair now or brown hair or whatever, that, you know, and she really wants to see you. And I'm thinking, I don't know why and whatever. And, and oh, this is this amazing girl from New Zealand. You've got to see her. I was like, I haven't even got an idea for doing anything. But I thought, mm, let's actually turn this thing around. You know, I don't fly. To, I don't want to fly to New York anymore or, or this or that. I'm going to be in my studio for a whole year and let them come. And also wanted to learn about photography within a very com constrained, com con uh, like a small, confined. Sp confined space to do a picture uh, over four seasons in just outside the door, one or two steps inside my door or on the pavement, left and right. And can I sustain my interest in good photography? And can I do portraits of, and I also before I, I thought I can only do pictures of portraits of people who I admire, at being attracted to, or somehow think they're great or good. And, uh, and I kind of wanted to make it more democratic, you know, also people I, I, I don't care or I don't like. We don't know. I, or I don't know. And, 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 it had re and I really tried with each person to do a really good portrait of each person. And uh, so, I, so I did that over, over a whole, whole year. And, and I said to this model agent, don't just send me the, if I, if I had to go with green hair or you know, whatever, whatever it was, you know, just send me fucking everyone. And uh, uh, it was really intense. 
uh, so many people. And uh, so anyway, 20, uh, 25 years later or, tw or 21 years later, while we're here in lockdown, uh, British woke and, 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 and asked, we thought, oh my God, let's just turn this the other way around and do a, uh, how do you call it? Revise. Reverse. Re reverse go sees, you know, where the stylist, uh, Poppy Kane, actually sent the clothes, you know, we chose the, the models in London. We, uh, the clothes got sent to the locations of the models. Poppy uh, zoomed them and said, well, this shoe, these shoes go with this dress and this hat goes with this Styling, is, styling called, is called. It's called styling, styling yeah, yeah, again. <laughs> He's so old, he forgets things I sometimes. It's been a few months. <laughs> and then I just drove with my little we just drove with our, uh, our electric car to this address, and it was a perfect, yeah, perfect we would thing just to, text to the show girl her London in this, in this lockdown. The girls will step out of their houses or apartments and and, and we just take pictures. And the same was like, okay, uh, uh, just go f two meters over there because the light is better or go a little bit more towards the door or just outside the door. So within the same small five meter radius, I took these pictures either from this side or from this side. And it was super exciting. And, and, and what, what was really exciting for me that all the models, all the girls or the women, uh, they, it, it got me really so excited about photography again. It was a real performance. It was a real act. It was a real, like, you know, three meters apart. We talked to each other and, and they were so excited to be photographed. They were very positive. And everything was, was, was really... And they said, we were so looking forward to it. And I think some of them, you know, they either live alone there or they don't see people and they took this lockdown very seriously. And they were so, so excited to come out and they're like, oh my God, it's you, I can tell up my toys. It <laughs> but but do you, could you see that this actually will change the way that you work going forward, that you'll take this experience with you, that, that the all, because this is what everybody is talking about in, in fat on every level of fashion that, it was just too much before. It was too much of everything, and everything was the, the the sort of soul, the soul of things was being lost. And this seems to be a sort of a, a quite a refreshing kind of, you know, a revival of human values in fashion in a way. I mean, hopefully, no. You're, I think okay. people, I was... you know, people maybe got or maybe us. I, we got I... time to. Wait, can I finish just saying two sure. things to Tim? I think hopefully people take this time to think about, not in general necessarily, but if you watch a film, think about what you saw. If you read a book, think about what you read. If you have a meal, try to take time to think about what's in front of you. Because I think a lot of times before we went to the cinema and then we left without thinking about what we saw. And we've done a lot of things. Do you? Oh. <laughs> We've done a lot of things, I think, really not taking time. Yeah. And it's many things. It's in work, it's yeah. in with each other, with our friends, with a lot of, you know, a lot of things. And I think hopefully this is where people get a little bit more, yeah, slow down. And, and in fashion especially, you know, everything became fast fashion. Mm. And luxury fashion became really like Formula One, I think. I have to say, my best work, my best projects, my best pictures always came when I was mostly alone. Mm. With, you know, all these fucking people, tons of people around me. It's for me, it's like, I, I remember when Dennis Freeman, Friedman was for many, many years uh, the, the creative director for, for, for W. He always said, oh my God, Jürgen. We love you. You are the cheapest photographer there is. <laughs> I don't fucking need anything. I don't, you know, it's like you can do a picture anywhere. I remember he asked me, he was begging me to work for, for him. And I couldn't quite get my head around this Americanness and of him. And uh, he's a super dear friend of mine. And, 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 and when there was money at the time, and he says, oh, I love the work you did with Venetia. And can we, can we, 
we can fly to the Bahamas, we can fly to Honolulu, we can, anything we can do, you know. And I was like, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know about all this. And uh, my agent at the time said, uh, I just meet him, you know. And then we, I, and then I went to, and then I was in New York, met him at this office. And it was this, what, how do you call this? These, Cubicles. These, these huge offices. No, they're right? in like water cooler cubicle office. Uh, and I'm out like, of fashion. oh my God, I can't believe how people work like that. And, and I said to him, we, we, we're going to do this. For, we're going to, we don't fly to Honolulu. Let's just do the story here in your office. This is insane. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, so, so things like that. And it came out great. That was my first story I did with, 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 with Dennis. Uh, and that's why I'm kind of uh, also so productive now because, because you know, things come out of your head and, 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 and they come out of my, uh, what, what I'm concerned with right now. So I, we, we, we don't go out at all. Once a week we go shopping, we shop a lot and then everything's in the fridge or freezer or whatever. And then we eat everything and we, 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 we cook every day for lunch, take some time. And so um, there's all these vegetables and fruits and, 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 and meat. So I'm starting to, 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 to photograph these flowers, these things. And I, I, you know, I do a lot of still lives and, 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 and bring other things of, of whether it's things from my father or and a, a, a printer and, and and I'm very and we have a I have a printer here where where I can print all these pictures, and everything is sort of in my studio now. So and this is your Carl Blasfeld period with the still lifes of of plants. A bit more complicated, <laughs> a bit more complicated, a bit more uh, autobiographical, or autobi like a bit more autobiographical. I, I, I think just photographing flowers per se, I don't think you can't do this anymore. No, it's true. It's you true. know, it's just like, uh, it's, it's just stupid. But you know, also what we did is we really adapted the, what was happening now into, took all that into the photography because you know, we go and we buy vegetables and we don't want them to go bad, you know, or if Jürgen doesn't chop them fast enough, they go bad. So then he tries to take them and incorporate them in the pictures or, you know, we like to have flowers and everybody was closed and there's this lovely flower guy, you know, on Portobello Road and we said, listen, if you have any flowers, we want to continue supporting your business. Why don't you bring us flowers once a week, you know? So he would scramble a little bit of whatever he has and bring it over for us. And then we have them in the studio and then that year again turns into something. So it's really that what is in front of us and happening now that he is turning into the picture. But, but this, this, people have adapted so quickly. I think that's been an amazing thing about this crisis is how quickly people have changed their habits. And uh, it, it seems to me it would be, I don't know how, do, do you think it's gonna be easy to go back to the old, the old the ways that people used to do things? Or do you feel that there is going to be a sort of more kind of intimate, you know, human element in, in your work and everybody's work? I think my work will, 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 my work will stay the same. I always, I, you know, uh, it, it just progresses. However, in general, Life I progress. In, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I, I don't know. But I have a, I have a not, not such a positive feeling about people. People say, oh, it's going to change. People are going to be slow. I don't think everybody wants to make money. Everything is going to be. I'm, I'm worried about that these commercial projects, if they come along. They want more, faster videos with more crap on top, da, 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 da. And it's, you know, uh, very, I, th I, I, I will find it very, I think it's going to be very difficult. You know, um, something, something that you've become very, uh, very known for is your enormous portfolios in um, magazines that you do these stories that run for dozens of pages. And the story that you did um, in Iran uh, for pop. Yeah. Arena on Plus. Arena on Plus, Arena on Plus, yeah. 
It was um, that that is one of the most um, the, one of the most striking things I think you've done recently, because I felt like it's interesting when you're talking about you've been shooting still life still lives while you've been in your studio, but there was a a very still elegant spirit I thought in that whole portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really curious as to how that all came about because to visit Iran um, now, I can't, well, in January? It was, uh, it was just, just after Christmas. Yeah. We were there when Soleimani got killed and we nearly didn't get out. And uh, uh, you, can, you can explain more. I mean, it was all basically Deville's idea. I, she, she I think like, next year we're going to go to Syria, maybe, or something like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I think, you know, um, the whole what idea... Appeal, what appeals to you about that kind of uh, challenge? I mean, it, it, it felt... I mean, the, the, when, when Jürgen says you, you nearly didn't get out, you nearly yeah. got out on that plane that was shot down. So yeah, That, was, that yeah. was like that. But the whole thing started is... Um, I would like to take Jürgen every year somewhere where he hasn't been because I think for an artist it's quite um, important to experience things that will hopefully, um, you know, challenge his creativity or, or bring something and he's, you know, now we know that he's as old as Concord, so he traveled everywhere and he's, you know, so somehow and I wanted to visit Iran for a very long time. I don't know why, quite how and why, but I felt that there is something very undiscovered about it. Mm. And, uh, and, and we weren't sure how, how to do it. And I proposed it to Jürgen and he said, Iran, like what? This sounds really crazy. And I said, you know, I think it's, it's worthy seeing whether we can try to take a trip and we were, lucky to have you know to, to get everything organized and we and we were we were greeted there by a, a a guide who you have to have in that in the country and we had a woman guide which we were also even more surprised to have a woman guide there and uh, she and, was like 35 and, and, and so funny super lovely and, excellent yeah and we went there just after christmas over new years uh, we spent 12 days there and we were very, very, very pleasantly surprised with everything we've seen, with the hospitality of people, with the beauty of the country. The variety um, of the landscape, variety of the, a landscape. The, the friendliness of the people. We had no internet. You, you couldn't have a credit card. Credit cards didn't work. Uh, the whole thing was heaven, you know. We, it we was a bit of a lock, I don't know, a lockdown, <laughs> or not a lockdown, but we were in a bit of an isolation there, which we felt was quite refreshing um, in, in a very sort of a strange way. And, and as we were observing all the people, you know, and, and we were really emerged, and we traveled a lot, we had a driver, and we drove a lot, and from one place to the other which you have to have otherwise you no know, otherwise you can't, you can't really own. no 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 you, you can't you can't really it, it was it wasn't a luxury it was a necessity to have something like that and it was and we were emerged in the whole you know country and customs and amongst people and Jürgen didn't bring camera he had an iphone and we started he started taking pictures and and i was very intrigued with the way women looked there and how they were wearing their chadors and 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 that whole bit and then somehow we and very quickly i got bored i'm thinking i can't just carry on like like a stupid tourist photographing all these temples and mosques and things like that you know i'm like oh my god i'm tired of this after five well, minutes wait a minute no but it's very it's really impressive you know we went to see persepolis and then a couple of days later, we hear that President Trump wants to bomb it, that place. You can't believe it. You just, you know, when you go and, 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 and stand in this really remarkable architecture and history and, I don't know, really, you, you know, civilization of people. Hmm. It's, it's really very impressive and people are very cultured there. And, 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 you know, of course, your first three days you photograph every tile. 
and every well, little corner. Well, I did. I was a stupid tourist. And Jürgen said, <laughs> like, okay, you know, how many, you know, what, what's, what, what, what else? So did you take the, the, the photos of the vases and things then? Vases, plants. I think they're very, think they're very nice and that's, they're, they're, it, there's a great rhythm in that story of the sort of the craft, the artisanal element, and yeah. then people. I thought that was what was really strong. It was, that was yeah. what I thought was elegant. Then, of course, you, 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 you see all these women in these chadors, you know, and they, they and, and, and then in the wind, they, you know, they Something blow Something very the mystical blow in the and wind. very, I don't know, and, positive. And it's like no negativity about that. I think we're- They look powerful and mysterious, these women. And- uh, I read a quote somewhere while we were there that I don't want to misquote uh, any any um, maybe religious things, but it said something like the woman in Chador frightens the enemy more than the blood on the battlefield or something like that, you know, so there is a lot of respect to to to, to women wearing Chador and and, uh, and, and then somehow with Yaga, we said, oh, you know, maybe I should buy one and, 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 and try to, you know, this is how that character came to travel with us. So and we kind of turned her into a religious we, woman. We spoke to the guide and we said, well, do you think, you know, we don't want to offend of, of, yeah. any, you know, fellow woman or, or, or any, any religious things. And she says, no, 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 it's totally fine. You know, because you're, you're required as a, as a female to cover your head. Um, and, and, and you have to, to have a jacket long, longer to cover your bum. You know, you can't show any kind of, of this body, female the body deep. shape. So she said it was not a problem that we do that. And so this is how um, for four days, every day, I was wearing the chador from the minute I woke up until and with the eye makeup. I went to sleep with the with the eyeliner. With the eyeliner, you know, and I think these pictures also got very striking because mm. it wasn't yeah. just you know here is the, you know Jürgen stops the car and says, "Hey, Deville, put the chador on and go, you know, hop there and stand next no, to she that." No, completely that. You know, character. that character was with us for four days and nobody has seen me wearing anything else. And the very first day, the, our guide and the driver, they couldn't couldn't recognize me. I passed by and they were like, oh, my God, we thought it was just this local woman. Yeah, suddenly and, she's a local woman. And I'm this fucking stupid idiot. <laughs> Tourist. <laughs> but did you feel there were different kinds of, that, that was a different kind of photo for you to be taking? That, that yeah, it, 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 it felt into it. Yeah. You know, instead of the just, what you know, suddenly I put her in front of all these things, you know, and somehow everything started to be super exciting and it made sense. And uh, it was beautiful. It was, uh, it was, and we had time and it was, it, it felt so effortless and beautiful to take these pictures and nobody bothered us and and nobody said you can't take pictures here or there because at no, the beginning i thought all, oh my god all. can you even take a photograph there you know from the from the government you know and uh, it, it was just such beautiful things we've seen and done and and she became this completely different woman and it's it's really moving but you know when you're taking when you're taking photos of doville like that um and uh, it's just you and her, and there's a sort of, you know, that kind of fundamental relationship with the photographer and the and the model, which yeah. um, I think is, you know, does it does it remind you of, of of the earlier days when you when you had this incredible connection with people like Kirsten Owen, and and it, it was just about this intimacy and and um and and Kristen McMenemy this sort of intimacy and this this provocation in a way and all these pictures whether it's with Kirsten Owen or with Chris McMenemy uh, it, 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 there was very little people there it wasn't yeah. that or anything like that you know and uh uh I want to say something about this other thing again forgot now uh, anyway which one that Iran or yeah Korea? yeah uh no, we really, we really, when it comes out, I think, you know, it would be, we're very happy with it. We're very proud. I think we've done something really 
um, it was very, I don't know, courageous. And, yeah, and it's quite challenging. It's challenging, but it's very beautiful. Yeah, you know, also political. And, and yeah. we did a lot of thought about it, you know, and, and, and how to do it. And then, of course, towards the end, we, with all this luck, we end up being in Tehran the day when General Soleimani's body is being brought in. And, and that gave us another sort of a different, different feeling about it. And, and Jürgen was taking these other pictures of, the, of what we saw on TV and things like that. And, and then of course the, the departure was even crazier because we couldn't leave the country and, and then we couldn't we get no, on the no flight and then we couldn't buy a ticket. And then you know we, we ended up being offered to be on the Ukrainian Airlines flight that got shot, shot down. you know. And we it, nearly took that flight. It was really, in, you know, it was really, really crazy, the whole thing. And, and somehow when we started working on the, on the pictures, which was really the first well, project in the, in the well, lockdown. We, we, we came back, I don't know, I can't remember, and on the 9th of January, 9th, 10th of January, something like that. And I've been busy with working so many, on so many other projects then the lockdown started and I'm thinking, oh my God, finally, I, you know, we took, between both of us, we took 15,000 pictures in Iran. In 12 days. In 12 days, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that takes a hell of a lot of concentration <laughs> and, 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 and time to edit things down, you know, and then edit things down and then more down and then look again. And then, and then and we didn't know what we were gonna do. We didn't. It wasn't done for Arena on Plus. It no. was just the project we did. But we were very, very happy that Arena on Plus and Ashley Heath agreed to put take it in the a, portfolio, a men's magazine, put it in have men's a, magazine, woman, and put a woman a chador in Chador on the cover. And we were very, very happy. And we, you know, a lot of kudos to 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 him and the magazine that they've done something that is. A bit and then the, the and then then the layout you know the sequence you know mm -hmm. you build a, it's like a symphony you know you build a build a beginning a little a Beethoven we have here you know too. <laughs> beginning and the end <laughs> and, uh, but you know it's still the way the still lifes punctuate the portraits you know yeah. it, it is it is very there's a there's a beautiful rhythm to that yeah, we were that we, 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 uh, it was concentrated and we we didn't do anything else than more or less, no? Did, two weeks, yeah. Uh, no, three, three weeks. Three, it took me three weeks to work to the photos. fully on that thing. But you, mm -hmm. you, said, you said there's a political uh, element in the story. Obviously, there is, but, uh, given the place and the time that you were there. Do you feel, are you feeling more political about your work now? Do you feel, do you feel a kind of responsibility with what you do to um, promote a sort of, the set of values. Well, I oh, I I I, I think so. Uh, I think so. But, well, first of all, I think, you know, I careful what I'm what I'm saying now. But uh, I always think I'm. Maybe look at this. I'm 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 very. Uh, no, I forgot what I wanted to say. Uh, uh, that I'm quite uh, hopefully quite positive towards women, you know, and in, 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 in a way that uh, I, I don't understand this beauty, this, this, this beauty product stuff and everything, you know, in magazine with all these ads and, and all these fashion ads, and then they retouch the legs to be so skinny and, and airbrush everything. And I think I stand for humanity. You know, and I think that's political and, and people look like this and people look like that and not like this weird figure uh, and, I said, and, and I've been doing that and promoting that in a way for the, for the last 30 years that you should be proud of who you are inside whether you're you know fat brown gray uh, skinny or what, whatever you are you know you, 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 you should be good with yourself you, but you, you know I think about you I think about your your collaboration with Araki, for example, in Japan, and William Eggleston, and these, these sort of old masters that, that you work with. Um, I, I, I often wonder whether you even consider yourself 
a fashion photographer at all? I mean, what would you, what would you, what do you think of yourself now when you think about those bodies of work that appear in fashion magazines, but have very, very little to do with what we think of as the usual content of fashion magazines? You know, you can do a portfolio of pictures of plates, for example, because teller means plate, but you know, it's self-portrait, I know. <laughs> he loves taking pictures of himself. <laughs> yeah, what about working with a working with Iraqi and and uh, well, it, it, you know, at the beginning of my career, I, of course, I had a complete complex about how good I am as a fashion photographer, and uh, and I was like, oh my god, I'm a fashion photographer, but but I want to be a great photographer, kind of thing, you know. But I'm doing this this thing and the other thing, and and I'm doing doing. I, I am simply absolutely not concerned at all what I am, you know, but it doesn't interest me at all whether I'm an artist or, or, or this or that. I just produce work and, and I publish it in different forms. And, and, and I really enjoy, just, I don't know why, I really enjoy fashion. And I, I think I'm a good fashion photographer and I understand the designer's idea of what they want to do with, the, with, with, with the man or with the woman or, and, and, and I photograph it very well. And I, 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 I can assess that very quickly and I, and, I, and I really enjoy it. But then of course, I, I couldn't be a normal fashion photographer who photographs fashion all the time, the whole time, you know, it would bore me to death, you know, so I have to have always something else. But fashion photography can open these, if you're positive, it, it opens you doors where you never could be able to, to, to go to or to visit or people to meet. There's some incredible, wonderful, creative people working in the in the in, in the fashion in the industry. In the, yeah, in the yeah, industry. It, it's 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 profoundly excellent people, you know. And uh, uh, and not, uh, and uh, when I was working with Mark Jacobs, you know, we did this collaboration with Cindy Sherman, and uh, I would have never had the idea. Oh. Well, I'm going to call up Cindy Sherman and I'm going to put myself in the pictures with, with Cindy Sherman. I'm going to call her up. It was stupid. It would never happen, you know. And he bought. I would like to see that. What <laughs> Cindy Sherman says no to you? <laughs> Maybe you can try calling Marina Abramovich or someone like. <laughs> Shut up, let me talk. <laughs> but, you know, Mark bought this, uh, bought a series of, 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 of these untitled film stills. And then they met, they got on with each other. So he calls me up and says, Jürgen, I'm just becoming friendly of, uh, with, with Cindy Sherman. What do you think about using her for the campaign? And I was like, without even thinking, I was thinking, of course, she's a fantastic person, fantastic artist. And then I thought, oh my God, what the hell am I going to do? Uh, and, uh, and of course, she could do photograph herself much better because she always has some theatrical, you know, she always deals with clothes in some way or another uh, when she photographs herself. And, and then it occurred to me, she is always on her own. And then I thought about an actor, number A or number B or number C, and I couldn't find, and I just, we suddenly just thought, oh my God, it's got to be me. <laughs> See, I told you to. <laughs> Yeah, he because will find the way to include himself. Yeah, only, only because I'm cheap. No, but the pictures are great. Yeah, he's cheap. He's got his eye on the bottom line. That's good. That's good. Mark would love that. But, but I'm saying this because this is what fashion can bring me. This collaboration with, with Cindy yeah. Sherman suddenly. Mm. Or some place I could have never imagined, you know. Or you, yes, I think, about, you know, we talk about collaboration and... and Mark, Mark is one, Helmut Lang was another incredible yeah. collaborator for you. And Vivian Westwood obviously is the uh, one that people are probably most familiar with now. Um, who, who, else, who else do you have that kind, do you feel you have that kind of uh, working relationship with, that kind of understanding? Obviously, yes, goes without saying. But I mean, in the, in the, um, in the world of, you know, in, with designers, is there any is there anyone now that you feel a, a sort of real kinship with? Of course, no, I have to I have to I have to have to say to all these designers I work with, they are so super important to me. I work very I, I, I really deeply enjoy working with Anthony from 
from from uh, uh, YSL or, or uh, Solar Road? Macarella. That old, yeah. he still lives in YSL time. <laughs> I work for that company when the old man But he man photographed Mr. Alive. Saint Laurent too, so that's why. Uh, but that's great. No, they're, I, they're I, really I, lovely, I, lovely I, brand, and really. I really enjoy his clothes, and I enjoy his ideas, and 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 the whole thing what we're doing together. I, I, it's it's deeply enjoyable, and I really like it. What 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 do, what what would you say was the 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 were the qualities that attracted you to to his work? You seem to like a sort of uh, quite a kind of precise find, kind of those incredible uh, uh, attractive to photograph and the, and the and the kind of sense of idea and style he has and he gives me these women I don't even know some of them who they are and they're like oh and I'm thinking oh my god they are excellent they are so hey, good hey 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 what do you mean <laughs> to work with of obviously you know what I mean. Uh, but also they have a very good vision. They give me something, he yeah. gives me something which is exciting yeah. to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And those women, those women are Anya, Anya Rubik. It's very interesting that they have very good vision, but also they're very open to what Jürgen can give. So it's extremely interesting. It's really collaborative, really, really collaborative. And, and it's, it's super. But, but, but then also, you know, completely change the subject. Because you mentioned William Eggleston, right? So uh, Harmony Kareem calls me up, the, the filmmaker uh, and artist. Uh, and he says, Jürgen, do you remember when we did this road trip 10 years ago with William Eggleston? Uh, and I've looked at the negatives and I looked at the pictures of, uh, you know, I think we should do a book about it. And I'm like, oh my God, 10 years ago. And I rescanned all my contact. That was still when I was working with the contacts with the with the with, with, with film, and uh, edited that. And that was also around the time when the, when the lockdown. And I was thinking, oh my god! I was I, I think ten years ago. I was so scared about these pictures. I didn't do anything with them uh, because going on a road trip with William Eggleston in America, in no man's land for days and drinking and God knows what else with Harmony Korean, William Eggleston and me. And uh, William- God knows what else. <laughs> William, <laughs> William's son. Uh, yeah. uh, Nearby hangs a tail. Uh, I, 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 I think it was good we waited 10 years. And so we worked on this book now and it's gonna come out now. As, as soon as uh, I can go to Steidl to print it, I, I want to be there and, 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 and print it. And things like that. There's all these kind of things, you know. And it's amazing that that I, I'm really, really, it's really romantic. And I'm so fond of this work of Harmony and me did with Eggleston together. And and uh, and and it was good that, that we didn't do anything for 10 years. I can't wait for, to have it out in the world now. What is that chemistry, for God's sake, between you and Harmony Corrine and William Eggleston? What does that look like in a small car? A small car, or was it a big? Was it an old Cadillac or something? Just to make it the story even more perfect, or was it a hatchback? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So I fly to uh, Nashville, Nashville, where Harmony used to live, and he's like, "Ah, oh, this is so kind of like." Eggleston wants this Jaguar, right? And he had this old Jaguar, you know, one of those really old school, elegant gentleman Jaguars. And he's like, I think it's better to have that four wheel drive kind of like high up number, right? It was a Range Rover or something like that, or something like that. Let's take that one. And I was like, are you sure? Why don't we take the Jaguar? It's, you know, it fits so much more to, to Eggleston driving into this no man's land, Mississippi and Tennessee and God knows where we were. And anyway, he wanted to, tr to have this four wheel drive. We drove there. Eggleston Bill was so pissed to see in that four wheel drive, he refused to get into this car <laughs> for a day. <laughs> we had to delay the road trip because like, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going into this car. I want the Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Probably didn't even have suspension, right? 
<laughs> it's just the wrong kind of car for him. So that is already a good start, a, 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 a good start of the trip. How bonkers the whole thing was. It, it, it sounds like it's. It sounds like someone in the future will make a movie about that road trip. You know, it seems like such a, like Jack Kerouac or something, some yeah, and, some story like that. And Harmony is so funny, and and he is so fearless. Oh my God, I, I, he 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 got me into places where I think, oh my God, we could have been shot so easily. It like I naive how I was in the middle of bumblefuck America, it, it, what we've done is like, oh my God, I, I, it's like. Probably it's even more weird when you look back 10 yeah. years. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, how thinking, could I have done oh something my God, like this? You know. how, often have, how often have you been in real danger in your work, do you think? In, in my work? Uh. Mm. I don't know, I've got to think about this. I nearly drowned once, but that was not when I was working. <laughs> no, it's really seriously uh, uh, in danger. I don't know. I seem to be lucky in the not last, last call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that Iran ending we, of Iran was crazy for us. We had really just really about mon enough money to get to this. To, to we had thousand US dollars in our hands, or was it euros, or whatever it was. Uh, to buy the ticket to Kiev, to fly to Kiev. And we both looked at each other and thinking, I don't know, there is something not quite right with this flight. And it completely doesn't make any sense yeah. because it would be the route you fly to Kiev and then Kiev, London, you're home. Uh, you know, it wasn't like flying to Honolulu and then over there. Uh, and, and, and there were no other flights and there was no escape route to get out of there. And we didn't take that flight. It's incredible. We both looked at each other and thinking, Strange, something yeah. is not quite right with that flight. I don't want to go on that flight. I mean, we're lucky. We don't have an explanation. Yeah, it's, it's you know, you know the, the Pan Am flight that, that um, crashed in Lockerbie over Scotland. Remember that Johnny Rotten was supposed to be on that plane. That's, a, that's one of the, the legends about that flight. And the same situation, just like, um, you know, where you just have a feeling and you just, don't want to do it. Well, that means you're here at least. How, how, um, Doville, how, how tricky is Jürgen to handle in a, in a country like Iran? Mm. Wait, wait, he is tricky to handle in any country, not only in Iran. <laughs> I was, I was telling to somebody recently, I said, this lockdown, I said, I am living with a lion in the cage. So every day you need to keep the lion fed and give him to do different things like in the circus. So the lion is occupied <laughs> with stuff. It's funny. I've always thought he was a pussycat. So actually he's a lion. Oh. He's a lion too. He's a lion. So it's just keeping him um, curious. I think it's very... Um, and it's important for me to, to keep him curious and to keep him creative and to, um, to maybe bring new ideas. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the ideas are maybe not that good or a solution is not that good. But I think for what works between us is that we, we have a lot of exchange of ideas. And I, and I would propose something and, and he would be like, oh, wow, this is really great, you know? And then something comes out of it. And then I think, oh, wow, he says it's great. I guess it is great, you know? And, and we try to, um, apart from, I, I guess I would say, apart from us being together in life, I feel very privileged to work with an artist such as Jürgen. And I, you know, I, I witnessed a lot of great things that I would not learn anywhere else. And, and, and he, 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 you know, and, and the way he thinks and the way he approaches um, everything. It's not even fashion, you know, every fashion and any project. And, and I'm very, very, you know, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky to have this professional relationship with him. His, his eye, there he's sitting there. I'm going to say his eye is quite an extraordinary eye. He has some photos of me somewhere that I 
hope don't pop out in a book. Well, no, I do. I hope they pop out in a book in 10 years when he looks at them in 10 years. <laughs> It'll be fun Absolutely. with our dog, Stella. But I wondered, uh, somebody asked me the other day, what have you learned um, during, this situ during this whole um, lockdown, during the crisis? What have you learned and have you acquired any new skills? And I thought that was quite interesting because um, I've been singing a lot. Improved cooking. Yoga acquired very good skills of chopping vegetables. The international <laughs> star photographer you degrading can chop me. everything really quickly now. You're degrading me. Uh, what uh, do you mean degrading? It's, it's on a country, it's a compliment for you. Who yeah, was chopping is hard. Chopping is very tricky. You need a good well, job. So it's cooking and I'm taking very much care of the garden because it's been such good weather. So I'm like I kind of like... A, talking to my trees, and to, my, <laughs> to the plants, and, and it feels really good doing that. Mm. You know, or chopping something off of, the, of, the, of, of, a, of a leaf, which is not right, and things like that. And, and it's wonderful watching things grow. Yeah, too. we have all these little birds in our gardens now. Garden now. And I have not seen them before somehow. Uh, and then, what else was the question? Young and made friends uh, with pigeons. <laughs> what, have you, what, have you, what have you learned about yourself? Uh, being totally content mm. with, with what I have. I mean, to also to realize that I'm incredibly lucky with 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 the uh, with the situation, you know, and and, uh, and 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 with with her, with what I can do, and and that that I, that I that I found that I stumbled across that. I have two eyes and I can see something and, 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 and I make something out of it and, and, and use my, like a cow, regurgitate my, my, my own life back again and, and, and redo something of, I'm still dealing with the suicide of my father and that comes back again into my work and so, so, sort of certain things. And uh, that's part also what I did with, with, with Araki, you know, and, uh, and, and that exhibition was called Leben und Tod, Life and Death. And uh, that, that was, I was super proud of that, of that exhibition. And also we're doing a book about that. Uh, and if, uh, what I learned about in this thing to be content with, 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 with small things, you know, mm. and we've been, all, we've been traveling so much, you too, you know, to this place, to that place and this and that. And which is great that. as well. And which is, which is know, exciting. We are very and great. privileged and, and and lucky. And uh, but uh, we literally we, we don't even go out in the park. We we, we go from the house. We're in the car to the studio, and and then we're just on our own in the studio. And luckily, I have this beautiful studio, uh, which I built, and uh, and 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 we we spend time there, and it's and and, and life is is good. We Thankfully. also agreed, Thankfully. you know that. There, I think if all of us went to the parks, there would be not enough space, you know. <laughs> so Jagger and I said, you know, we're going to give our space in the park to somebody who doesn't have a garden or who doesn't have a place to go out. And we do. And, you know, and, and I think it's very important in this time to be sensitive about things like that, you know. And I was growing up in Soviet Union, so I have this very sort of communistic approach to it and I said yeah again you know we're not gonna out anywhere and it's like what do you mean we're not gonna go to the park I said no we cannot go we need to take it very seriously you know and and we we really went for this sort of you don't have a fucking Putin <laughs> ruling over me I can't do anything anymore the populist uh, but do you, do you think you're more reflective perhaps now? I, I, I felt the, I felt the, the, the Iran photographs were quite reflective, you know, that there was a sort of, the, a sort of, a, a kind of slowness to them in a way. Yes, yes, and everything slowed down. And it's, and it's, and it's great. And that's why, that's when suddenly this burst of energy comes out of ideas when you do things slow. Mm. Because of doing nothing and just chopping stupid vegetables all day long, uh, you, then suddenly something comes and an idea comes, you know. So you don't do always something completely concrete, but out of this playfulness of doing things, suddenly something really excellent comes as an idea. And then I'm like a bulldozer 
working so hard on these things, uh, right? Yeah, no, it was really, it's, it's, it's reflective and it's a lot of, I think it really gave Jürgen a lot of, I guess we're trying to find silver lining in this, you know, it's, it's hard to see how could, what could this crisis bring, but he really, be, again, not became, but he found time to emerge in total creativity, obsessive, really, you know, really obsessive. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to keep up with him. Well, I think the, the lesson is, the lesson has been for everyone that, that a slowdown is, is necessary, I think. For sure. Everything good, of course. has to slow. For yeah. the nature and for everything, we, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, uh, but, yeah. but also, you know, not that I cared very much in the, uh, in, in the beginning anyway, what other people think of my work, but now even less so. Uh, 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 I, I just fully go hardcore. Somehow liberating, I think. Hardcore, for you, I more so of what the fuck, I, uh, that, that's what I want to do. And, mm -hmm. and I don't simply don't care whether anybody likes it or not. You know, I'm completely just in just the act of doing it. I see the pleasure. I'm having fun doing it. That's good enough for me. Mm. And of course, obviously, the work will be good then. <laughs> hopefully. And hopefully I do. <laughs> hope. well, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing to seeing how many new books have you got coming out then? How many do you reckon? Uh, well, three are completely in production, ready to be printed. And then I'm working on uh, four other ones. Oh, well, there's 2020 then. <laughs> Thank you very much, you two. It's lovely to see you. And um, yeah. I can't believe you're only a few, about half yeah. a mile away or something, but we'll see you again soon, I hope. Next, so, time, next time you hang, you hang a picture of me on the wall here. <laughs> behind you. <laughs> behind me. Yeah. Well, there's, there's one of your pictures right there. Well, why isn't it there for everybody to see? <laughs> <laughs> you have to give one to Tim before that. Thank you for having oh, us. Look, this is my favorite one. It's right there. It's Kirsten. Um, okay. Thank you. Good. 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 It's really Good. nice. Good.